Thank you very much, Nandi. Let's pick up here. Human Settlements Minister Lindy Wesisulu says government will ensure Cape Town officials comply with a court order which declared evictions unlawful. The Western Cape High Court ruled against the demolition of houses and eviction of Hangberg residents in Hout Bay as unconstitutional. Minister Lindy Wesisulu joins us now. Minister, good morning to you. I want to start off with uh, what the mayor of Cape Town, Den Plato, says, and I quote, we will stand up for residents who are impacted by illegal land invasions. How do you respond? Well, he may stand up for um, people who are impacted by land invasions. That is their responsibility to protect uh, that particular land. However, they may not evict people, and they know that. And I'm glad that uh, this case has been won by the South African Human Rights Commission um, because uh, it is inhumane to uh, evict people. But over and above that, there are various ways in which uh, anybody who is evicted would need to be given the space and the right to defend themselves. Mm. I'll tell you what the laws, the, the Constitution and the laws say about eviction. It indicates very clearly in section 25 of the constitution that no one may be deprived of property except in terms of general application of section 26, which is I will get into, which provides that no one may be evicted from their home or have their home demolished without an order of court. Mm. I don't know if the city of Cape Town has ever considered that they have courts that they have to resort to before they evict anybody. Here's their so argument, Minister. Are... Here's their yes. argument, and I'm sorry to cut in. And again, I quote, there is no right in law which prohibits a landowner from demolishing or removing an unlawfully erected structure. That is not true. That is not true. Any landowner who finds that, there's, that there has been erected on his property illegal structures has the responsibility to go to the law and indicate that they have the, they, they would like the right to remove those people. That is in the Constitution. It's not even in the law. Mm. Very clearly worked out in the Constitution. No one may evict anybody from anywhere. Let's talk, However, about, practic let's talk about practicalities then, Minister. Illegal yes. invasions... Again, this is their argument. Illegal invasions, they lead to the pollution of waterways and property owners, they lose their investment overnight. I'm sure you, you would sympathize with that. No, I wouldn't, because human rights is about the dignity of the human being. The history of this country has been littered with black people being removed from 1912, 1913, from their, from their homes, from their land, from one place to another. The growth of all of these uh, new um, dumping places, Mutabe, Mutabelo, Winterfeld, Midlands, Sofia, you, you name it. Mm. This has been the result of what it is that the settler, or what people who settled in areas that were originally black areas have resorted to mm. without without any care about what you know what happens to those people the, this is their land mm. the 1913 land act made it legal for them to do that we're now in a new dispensation and the new dispensation has a constitution the mm. constitution is very clear about what you do when you find yourself in that situation if you believe that it it pollutes the waterways and does all of those things you have a right to go to court but and request that those be removed here's another argument minister and this one favors the occupiers themselves it they yes. put their lives in danger by building structures close to areas that can easily be flooded they also connect electricity illegally which leads to people being electrocuted H how do you protect them from themselves Early, I think we are beginning now to patronize black, black people. We're beginning to patronize people who have been driven off their land. The process of urbanization brings with it the kind of people who would like to have better opportunities in areas where they may get work. 
we have been working, we've been dealing with the issue of eviction since 1994, and that is why we have such strong laws about that. If you want to protect people from harming themselves, you go to court. If you so, if you care so much, you go to court, you get a court eviction, and those people are requested to move. What are you going to do so then, Minister, that, to, which, to, to that, enforce this? About, sorry? What are you going to do then? Because in your statement, you're very clear that you are going to do everything in your power to enforce what the court has ordered. And that includes, a, as far as that court order is concerned, making sure that uh, these structures are rebuilt within 48 hours. That is a court order. And if they don't, if they don't, um, if they don't erect those uh, structures within 48 hours, I will take them to court. That's a court order. And they may not. They may not ignore a court order. All right. You know, there is there is a way in which uh, any government, any caring people, would be able to go to a community and say to a community, "We think you live in dangerous areas." And we would like to put uh, put aside some land for you, hmm. uh, and and so that you can put up your houses. South Africa belongs to all of us who live in here, and it is the responsibility of government, including local government, to make sure that people who live in dangerous areas are allocated land where they there is no danger to their lives. Hmm. But evicting them in the middle of winter is illegal. It is immoral. It is just not acceptable. Right. Over and above right. that, we do have laws now that that govern uh, the period we're in, which is um, uh, governed by the, uh, the uh, governed by the, the lo local government cocktails. Um, the state of the, uh, the state of state of state of disaster. Yes, yes. the disaster uh, management. And in the state of disaster, we have re uh, regulations that indicate that nobody may evict anybody. All right. On the other hand, we also have. A, law, a, a clause that says nobody may invade All right, uh, Minister. So uh, I'm, I'm sorry to, to cut in, Minister. We are out of time, but I've, I've got to put this uh, final question to you. The Sisulu oh. family are very, very close, your family, with uh, the Mandelas. It's a difficult period. Um, Zinzi Mandela is going to be laid to rest tomorrow, we understand. How's the family holding up? Uh, early we were talking about evictions. I didn't know you'd get to this soft spot. We we managing Zenani is back. Uh, the, the whole Mandela family now is together, and I think that they are preparing themselves for the burial tomorrow. Um, it has been confirmed that she was uh, she has tested positive COVID po positive, and uh, so we will take all the necessary precautions to make sure that we are within. Uh, the laws that govern that kind of funeral, mm. but um, it's, it's, a, it's a terrible time. Um, she was just so full of life. She was so full of the fight against injustice and all of those things. You'll find her on Twitter. Um, she she was just uh, her mother all over again. So we just we saddened by that. Yeah, Minister. Well, condolences to. The Susulus and indeed condolences to the Mandela family. Thank you very much for your time, Minister Lindiwe Susulu.